What's going on, everyone? I'm just a typical, average American, here today to react and continue learning about a Norwegian TV show called Son Air Norge, part two. If you haven't seen part one, feel free to go check that out first, or stay here in part two. But in part one, we started learning about some very important things that Americans could really learn from Norway, like how in Norway, you don't rely on your parents to pay for school, and how so kids in Norway are a lot more independent um, than here in America. And we left off sort of learning about how in Norway, people actually care about their jobs. And in Norway, you might even feel bad for quitting your job, which is very, very different to how it is here in America. So I'm really interested in uh, continuing this today. I think it has a lot of valuable lessons, actually, that Americans could learn from. So let's take a look. Why do Scandinavians have a less strained relationship to their bosses than Americans? Yeah. It's because in the US, your boss has so much more power over you. Your ah, I was wondering about this. I was wondering. Because uh, it, it sounds like in Norway, people are a lot happier. People have a much better relationship with their job, with your employer. Um, in America, people really aren't happy, uh, especially now more than ever. People really aren't happy about their job. They usually don't like their boss or their company uh, or the company takes advantage of us or... And it's because I think the laws are very different. In a, it's true. He's right. In America, your boss, your employer has a lot of power over you. Your boss can fire you at any given time. You are more dependent on your boss, not only because of low unemployment benefits, but because medical care is tied to your workplace. Absolutely. Absolutely correct. In America, you get your health care insurance your health care coverage from your job. So it's a huge deal if you lose your job. And you, you're really forced to put up with whatever your job wants, really. We do not have a healthy relationship with our jobs in America. I totally agree with this. What else did you lose? I lost uh, my benefits, my health insurance. And so what has that meant for you in terms of getting health care? Um, I don't have it for myself or my family. When oh my god, like you have... If you don't have health care in America, if you don't have health care coverage, you are in so much trouble. Like, you could end up owing the hospitals thousands, tens of thousands of US dollars. You could go into massive debt, bankruptcy. If something happens to you and you have to go to the hospital and you don't have health insurance, it could ruin your life. And apparently, this is all very different in Norway, which sounds great. <laughs> I don't know why we do it like this, but we need to hear more about other systems of, of employers and governments and healthcare like Norway. When your relationship to your boss gives you this amount of inferiority and dependency, you might stay in a job you dislike for too long. Yeah. And when you finally decide to move on, it's a grand and dramatic choice. I quit! In uh -huh. Scandinavia, on the other hand, we have some allies that the Americans lack. That changes how we relate to our boss. Really? We have the Working Environment Act that protects us from being fired without the proper reason. Wow. If we lose our job and our child fell, falls ill, we're not in deep trouble because we'll get decent unemployment benefits. And oh, you have unemployment benefits. Wow. So you get special benefits if you don't have a job. Oh, wow. That's awesome. And 
free medical treatment. Free medical care. That's the big one. That's one of the biggest problems in America, for sure. Yeah, I mean, they keep talking about how Norwegians are just happier in general than Americans. And this is obviously a huge reason. Americans are, we're extremely stressed. You know, sometimes we enjoy our jobs. Sometimes you get lucky and you like your boss or your company. But uh, companies have so much freedom and capitalism is so strong in America. It's really, uh, I don't know, it's a harsh, it's harsh. <laughs> it's a harsh world. Uh, but I think as Americans, we're just used to it. We don't even really think about this that much. We kind of accept it. Uh, even though there's other ways of doing it. We just don't learn about or consider other ways, like the Norwegian ways. So the decision to finally resign doesn't feel as grand and dramatic. Here's a Swedish guy who is inspired by the Americans and resigns in public, but without that boiled up anger. Ett kundmeddelande. Efter snart 11 års tid till servete som serviceinriktad kassör slägger jag idag in handduken för gott. Jag vill passa på att tacka er alla kunder som indirekt betalat wow. min lön. Jag vill även tacka personal och ledning som fått mig att trivas och stanna kvar. Slutligen vill jag passa på att inför framtida utmaningar önska mig själv ett stort lycka till. Oh my, this would never happen in America. It's crazy because most people are very happy to leave their jobs in America. Very happy, usually. Um, and a lot of people quit because they're unhappy with their manager or the company or not because they're going to a better job necessarily, but most people can't even afford to quit and, and do have to put up with bad situations. But <laughs> in part one, they showed a lot of Americans doing these big over the top quitting videos where they get on the phone, the intercom, and they're like, screw you. Screw everybody, I quit, and hang up and jump off the table. But uh, in Scandinavia, it's like, what? It's, it couldn't be more different. People are like, thank you for this opportunity. Thank you for working with me. And I bid you a good day, goodbye. It's very, it's so much more gracious and polite. You have such a better attitude towards your employers. <laughs> The freedom machine also liberates you from your spouses, or to call a spade a spade, liberates women from men. Oh. All straight women dream of a man that is kind, handsome, and exciting. But when you're choosing a guy to have kids with, you need to get realistic. This is when American women use a different set of criteria than their Scandinavian sisters. The really? I... I'm not sure where we're going with this one. I'm not sure what we're talking about. The women needing liberation from the men? Like, I understand that in the old days where women, women literally had less rights, but uh, well, I'm not sure what the lesson is here. I'm curious. The big question becomes... So, how to get a rich guy? I'm going to be talking <laughs> about money and why it is that you should only marry a guy <laughs> Who has it? How to attract rich men in Oh! <laughs> oh, no. Oh, geez. Okay. So in, in Norway, you don't really have women like this who are just seeking money? You don't really find that? There's got to be some, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this is true. <laughs> I didn't even think about this. Yeah, in America, you do get a lot of people who are looking out for themselves. That's a very American sort of thing. We're taught. Look out for yourself. Find somebody rich. Or take advantage of people so that to make sure you're comfortable. Yeah. It's your life. By the way, here's a great tip if you want to meet rich men. I encourage you to go to coffee shops that are in financial districts the second place that I'll go where I'll see tons of high quality men, and I'm really shocked that there's not tons of women swarming these events, mm -hmm. are interesting business networking events. Not okay. all women in America <laughs> set out to find a wealthy spouse, but 
if you ask American women which characteristics they find important in a husband, 71% of them say it's very important that a man can financially support his family. I mean, to be honest, I'm, I'm kind of okay with that. I think it's reasonable to want a partner that can help support your family. You have to have some financial stability. Um, you wouldn't want to marry someone who just does nothing and has no job and no finances. That would be bad. So it's a balance. It's a balance. That shouldn't be the only thing you're looking for. But in America, it's definitely a consideration. Why do American women care so much about men's income? Is it because they're superficial? No, it's all about Practicalities. If you are an American woman and you want to have a child, the average delivery now costs more than $4,500, even with insurance. Yeah. You will not get paid yeah. maternity leave, you won't get cheap daycare, and you won't get child support. Oh, I see now. I see what the point is here. This is, this is correct. In America, you don't get a lot of financial benefits. Uh, giving birth to a baby at a hospital costs thousands of dollars. Not much maternity leave, expensive daycare, yes. No child support, yep. So basically women in America really, really need to value men with money because there's all these extra expenses. But I guess you don't have this problem in Norway. Is that right? This is why you need a man to support the family. And this is why 27% of American women end up being stay-at-home moms. Mm -hmm. The men are required to bring home the bacon, so broke men are hurting American women's marriage prospects. <laughs> but in Scandinavia, where women can, thanks to the government, give birth for free, get wow. paid maternity leave, cheap daycare, and monthly child support for everyone, wow. of course, it's nice to have a man, but they are not dependent on him. Wow, that must be so much better for women in Norway. So much better. Yeah, yeah. I was kind of, I was kind of thinking, oh, this isn't that big of a deal. This is normal in America. But when I have it explained like this, this makes a lot of sense. This is, this is eye opening. Also, having those arrangements means that mothers can work and earn a living. Only four percent of Norwegian moms stay at home. Wow. Wow. So you can, is, you can afford daycare, you can, because in America it's like, <laughs> well, I can't believe this. S so much more women in Norway work. So much more women work. Wow. It's not gender bias training that has made this possible. It's government-funded services yeah. that allow Scandinavian women to have more freedom and equality than American women. Yeah. We rank highest on the World Economic Forum's Global Gender Gap Index, while you rank us number 53. Ah. It's now time to ah. reveal the freedom machine. Okay. A government <laughs> that solves this eternal dilemma of receiving support while also maintaining your freedom. And the great thing about the state is it's impersonal. It has no feelings. It just helps you without wanting anything in return. Besides wow. taxes, that is. But the level of taxes is not that bad. We're not emigrating. And we're the happiest people in the world, remember? Wow. That's the answer, huh? That's what this whole video has been building up towards. What America is doing wrong is our government. Um, and I agree. I, I'm totally convinced. Uh, <laughs> in part one, we talked about how children have to depend on their parents in America to afford education, to go to college. Um, and that causes a lot of problems. Then, uh, <laughs> man, man. And uh, in this video, we learned about how um, in America, women have to depend on men more for taking care of children and supporting the family. That's true. And how 
in America, people are unhappy at their jobs because jobs don't really support you that much. But in Norway, you've solved all these problems with proper government programs. Man, and it, it does sound better. <laughs> it, does, it does sound like a lot of problems are solved through um, government-funded uh, health care system. Really, it's all paid for by taxes, but so universal health care, better benefits, unemployment benefits, um, child benefits, education. Yeah, it's all the Norwegian government programs. Wow. But hold on, many Americans claim the contrary, that a strong state fails to liberate its residents. I think you all know that I've always felt the nine most terrifying words in the English language are, I'm from the government and I'm here to help. <laughs> so does this state machine really set Scandinavians free? That's very true. In America, we have a negative, the government has a negative reputation. If the government is coming for you, it's not to help. If the government is coming to do anything for you, it's not a good thing. It's not to help. Very rarely is it to help. It's always bad. <laughs> that, that is the stereotype in America. Wow. One way to measure freedom is simply to ask people, are you satisfied with the freedom you have to do as you please in life? Right. Then we can see which countries have the highest percentage being satisfied with the level of freedom. On right. top of the list, we find countries with strong welfare state. Oh my gosh. It's all Scandinavia. Norway, Finland, Denmark at the top of every list. This is such a great question, by the way. I'm satisfied. Are you satisfied that you have the freedom to live your life as you want? And I think so many Americans would say no. And then way down the list is the U.S. with your relatively weak state that leaves you more alone. It le the government leaves us alone and we're unhappier and we're unwilling to even talk about other solutions, to even consider like a Scandinavian style government. On the other charts measuring personal freedom, we see the same pattern. Scandinavians crush the Americans. Mm -hmm. You used to be the shining city up on a hill. Ah. No, we, in all humbleness, have taken that place. So dear USA, like us, yeah. you love independence, but in being fixed on this idea that the state limits your personal freedom, you have actually become more dependent. Without public support, you must rely on your wow. parents, your employers, and your partners to take care of you. True. Please. True, true, true. Instead of depending more on our government, we, instead we move the responsibility. We move the responsibility to our parents to help us, our bosses to help us, our spouses to help us, instead of utilizing taxes and the government. Please swallow your pride <laughs> and do as we have done. Build a powerful, competent, impersonal, caring government machine that sets you free. This idea is our gift from your friends and allies in Scandinavia. Thank you for your time. Good luck. Wow. Wow. That, is, that would be a gift. This would be great. This is a gift. And I think all Americans should watch this video because it's really powerful and really true. I don't see America changing anytime soon. That's the problem. We don't really have the ability to, at this point, to change in a meaningful way. Even when it's obvious that it will help us. And that's kind of sad. So it's like the answer is right in front of us, but there's nothing we can do to use it. That's really sad, actually. But uh, besides that, I did, I did really enjoy this. I got a lot out of this video. A lot. This was really interesting to hear about some of the stuff Norway is doing um, a lot better. So anyway... If you enjoyed this as well, feel free to give this video a like or leave a comment with your thoughts. If you're Norwegian and your thoughts on your government and if you think it does better than the American government or any of these topics, that, that'd be fun to hear about, honestly. Uh, 
And if you're interested in more videos like this, me reacting to Norway and learning about Norwegian culture, feel free to subscribe for more. And until then, thanks for watching and see you next time.